fully aware that there might be a um, an issue at any point. It could be an issue right now. Let's check. Do 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 and tales of forbearance. Hello, hello everybody, by the way, uh, just setting things up. Uh, so, you are going on. I definitely don't want to think that oops. Yeah, oops. Let's just show that it works. Ooh, yeah, good. Too shy, shy. Now let's actually check that the, everything's all jeezy. Ah, it says part three, but it's not part three, you liar. You liar. It's actually part five. When will the lies stop? If I were you guys, I wouldn't trust me at all. I wouldn't trust me as far as I can bloom and well throw me. Why do you say that for nothing? Um, so, edit. <laughs> Uh, part five, and this of course will be the final part. Uh, there's no way it's not. It, it, I won't let it be anything other than the final part. In fact, actually, my main concern is that we'll finish too early. And then we'll have no time to hang out. I mean, no, we'll have too much time to hang out. I need some more water. Water break. <coughs> Hello. Uh, sorry, wait, I'm very busy being annoyed by... Oh my lord, why is everything... Okay, there we go. Uh, hello, Leptoceratops. Hello, Raptoress. That seems like two very kind of um, dinosaur-y themed uh, comments in quick succession, which is interesting. And just to make the the uh, triple, we have Rachel Till. That's not dinosaur-y. Hello, everybody. Uh, it's um, happy it's no longer Christmas anymore uh, day. So obviously I can't wear my Christmas jumpers now. I've got to wear my, I don't know, just just a regular jumper, right? That's what it is. A mustard jumper, which is great because I kind of got like a mustardy colored wool and I've got some nice orange lights in my room. So I just look, I just look like Mexico right now. Let me tell you, it's all, it's all yellow up in here. Um, and just for the record, um, uh, while I'm aware that referring to people as yellow um, is not generally perceived to be a racial comment um, when talking about Mexicans, uh, just to make sure nobody even thinks that, I'm of course referring to the tendency for uh, uh, films and TV shows when set in Mexico to have a, a yellow tint to them. Spring vibes. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose it's kind of springy. Of course, I mean, what we're really in now is the period of the year where everything's crap and nothing matters. Um, like, okay, wait, when's Chinese New Year? That's like literally the next thing that's going to matter is Chinese New Year. Where we shan't be... Okay, 22nd of January. That's not bad then. So, okay, yeah, we've got Chinese New Year to look forward to. And then when's a uh, Pancake Day? Okay, bing, let me just bing it. Uh, pancake Day is uh, the 21st of February. Um, and then it's Valentine's Day. Okay, so there's like a, a a decent distribution going on. So wait, when was when was Chinese New Year again? Uh, okay, so yeah, twenty second of January, fourteenth of February, and twenty first of February. Those are uh, that's our distribution of um, holidays to get us through the winter. So Chinese New Year, we can all eat some Chinese food work on our walk skills, or walk on our work skills, am I right? Uh, then Valentine's Day, we can all do stuff. Valentine's Day is one of those weird holidays because, I don't know, it's kind of like, uh, even if you are in a relationship, like, at the end of the day, it's kind of like, you, you kind of feel like anything that you should be doing like, any, anything you might do on Valentine's Day, you kind of feel like you should be doing it anyway. Like, it's always one of those things where it's like, we'll be in love, but extra in love. And it's kind of like, well, like the implication of that's a little bit like, okay, 
So usually you're not into that. Um, they already have Valentine's Day crap in the supermarkets. Yeah, that's crazy. But, you know, uh, granting that there is at least some substance to Valentine's Day as a holiday, um, there's Valentine's Day. Of course, this leads to the interesting point, which is the, the third holiday. I count this I count this as a festivity of note, and more so than that, I count it as a more well-defined and meaningful holiday than Valentine's Day, is Pancake Day. Pancake Day. It's such a great, it's it's my favorite day, because you just eat so much pancakes. So much pancakes? So many pancakes. Ah, oh, it's so good. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. And obviously when, when there's Pancake Day, that means there's only, of course, yeah, I'm seeing, and Easter stuff. Um, yeah, Easter's... Uh, yeah, that, that's feel like, because it's not even the right season. I mean, I know people do it at Christmas too, like, you know, they're celebrating Christmas in autumn. Of course, technically speaking, and this is, this disturbs me to my core, technically speaking, winter only starts uh, sometime around December 20th, which is like so stupid, because it's like, so the majority of December isn't actually in winter. It's a stupid system, and I don't have time for it, frankly. Uh, but yeah. So yeah, Pancake Day, that's, that's not so bad. I'm, I'm happy with that. So we've got like a, a an even distribution. There's also, I don't know when the Oscars are happening. Um, there's something to the Oscars as well. Like they're not quite as comforting, but uh, let's bing that. Oscars 2023. Happy 2023. 12th of March. Okay, so Oscars are in the spring. That's. I think that's good. I think Oscars should be in the spring. I feel like the winter should have a lot of food holidays. So Chinese New Year, I like that because, you know, I mean, you, you might watch a Chinese film, uh, you might uh, dress up as a, <laughs> in, in like, what's it called? Like a cultural appropriation outfit. That's cool. I've got, um, I've shown it before. I can't really be bothered to get it out actually. I've got like a kind of oriental style um, dressing gown. Uh, but of course the main thing you're really gonna wanna do on Chinese New Year is, is have Chinese food. So boom, food, 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 it's good. Pancake day, food. I think, yeah, that, it's a good system. Uh, according to Le Leptoceratops, it's summer here. <laughs> what kind of crazy topsy-turvy land are you from, you maverick? Um, yeah, I don't know, I would not like to, sorry, I don't want to dunk on your country, but I would not like to live in Australia um, for two reasons. One, I feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't like the idea of it being summer during all the winter festivities. Like, that's... I don't like that. That's not cool. Um, and two, it's just too isolated. Like, most of the interesting stuff is in... Like, there's just no way around it, to be honest. The vast majority of interesting stuff is in the Northern Hemisphere. And, like, the thing is, I'm not even being racist there, because, like, the majority of Africa... Well, not maybe the majority, but a significant proportion of Africa is in the Northern Hemisphere. But the most interesting stuff, I mean, like, Mali and, like, that whole thing, like, the kind of, like, West African history, that's all in the Northern Hemisphere. Obviously, Egypt. Um, I thought I wouldn't name Egypt right away, because I do feel sorry for Africans that, like, the only... You know, you know, like the number one when people think about like culturally significant um, African and you know historically significant African civilizations, the first port of call cool is the African civilization that was the closest to somewhere other than Africa. So I thought I'd give Mali a shout out. You know, that's deep in the heart of Africa. Um, but yeah, it's in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, China, Japan, Northern Hemisphere. I mean, heck, even like um, you know Khmer kind of Angkor, Northern Hemisphere, India, Northern Hemisphere, most of the Americas. I mean, sure, maybe you can go to Argentina, but like, apart from that, I think technically Rio's in the Southern Hemisphere, because, yeah, okay. Um, but like Mexico, like all of kind of like the, the Mayan civilization, all that kind of stuff, Northern Hemisphere, everything important is in the Northern Hemisphere. It's kind of why I think it's weird when people say like the, the whole... Um, like, the map being the way up it is, is because of, like, uh, Eurocentrism. Because it probably is because of Eurocentrism. But it's not as if, like, if any other civilization had been in charge of maps, 
it wouldn't have also been the Northern Hemisphere, you know? Because it's like, yeah, but like if the Japanese or the Chinese were in charge of making maps, it would also have the North on top. Uh, yeah, like there's a very select few countries that could have been in charge of maps to justify them being oriented to the South on top. All right, okay, let's stop being ridiculous. Um, I actually do want to get back into the habit of doing like timestamps for my live streams. Um, I used to do that and I stopped doing it because I became bored and lazy. Um, but no, I think if I'm going to subject you to these live streams, I should really go back afterwards and put some uh, timestamps in it. Uh, all right, everybody. So I get, yeah, let's just jump into the video. What, oh, let's do it. Oh, okay, so I think I kind of randomly skipped around because everything was screwing up, so we'll see how it is. Our anxiety. I don't want to think about the fact that society is unfair or that the systems I'm part of exclude people. I definitely don't want to think about the fact that I could have... Yeah, sorry, I'm just, uh, you know, I don't need to respond to that, actually. But I'm um, sorry, have I even said hello to Lisa yet? Um, hello, Lisa. Hello, Useless Strawberry. Um, nice to see both of you here hanging out i'm glad that you could make this stream uh, you're saying i'm streaming early by the way lisa i've got some good news um i think going forward i'm going to try and stream around this time consistently when i stream oh here's something else i haven't mentioned yet so obviously i kind of last stream did the whole new year moderately new me thing um i must admit i'm doing the thing where like i'm trying to work out uh, because it's the new year, but the good news is it, I don't think I need to go to the gym. I think I can work out sufficiently at home. Uh, I haven't actually started yet, so I don't I don't fully do the, the new year, new me thing. But it's because like it's the whole like paradox of the new year, new me thing, right? Because the first day of New Year's, you will have stayed up the night before. And I kind of feel like I personally can't really have that like, let's do it, let's go out and like, let's be the best people we can be when I'm waking up at like 10 a.m. Uh, so I kind of basically starting next week is when I'm doing New Year, New Me. Um, but yeah, anyway, the point is, sorry, all that matters is that in the last live stream, I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to maybe be doing things um, a little bit uh, like just just some very minor changes that you probably won't be perceptible to most of you because it will mostly be behind the scenes stuff in terms of just like sticking to a more strict schedule to organize my time. Um, so the only sense in which you'll notice it will hopefully be more consistency with things uh, and like things seeming a little less hectic. I will, for example, probably get better at actually scheduling streams and feeling confident I will make them for the time I mean to make them. That kind of stuff, which isn't a bad thing. But the one other thing which I was like, oh, I really want to do this, and I don't know, like, um, I'm not sure. It's a bit dissonant from my channel, but it's not. So basically, like, I think for a while, like, I've teased the idea of playing through the Harry Potter games, which obviously the only sense in which it's remotely relevant is because of J.K. Rowling, but I've also just wanted to do it. Um, so I think... Basically, I'm not going to... My plan, for the record, okay, here everybody, you ready? Is basically, I will stream on Tuesdays, I will stream on Fridays, and I will stream on Sundays. Basically doing this. But then also, on Thursdays, I will stream in a much more casual capacity. So there you go. Um, right. Why is Philosophy Tube starting to look like ContraPoints? I mean... I'm not really sure how similar I would say Philosophy Tube looks to ContraPoints, apart from in the sense that obviously they'll look kind of similar as both being biological males who are presenting in a stereotypically feminine way, and I think both to some extent have had different surgeries done. I would maybe think Contra has had more, I don't know. But I, I don't know if I'd say they look that similar. Huh. Uh, which celebrities do you think are closeted gender critical? <sighs> That's an interesting question. Um, I, I don't I don't really know how many people I would say actually are closeted gender critical because, I don't know, maybe I have a lot of faith in people. I kind of like to think that most people 
I think basically my theory is that um, more so than people being closeted, you have people being, I guess I'm going to say willfully ignorant, um, where basically I don't think there are that many people who are like, oh, I know that there are problems with trans activism, uh, but I'm too scared to say it. I don't think there are that many people consciously thinking that to themselves, but I think there are probably people who maybe deep down, they know there's something wrong, but they are kind of choosing to delude themselves and being like, well, you know, it's, it's just like being gay. It, it's, it's, and you know, obviously I'm, I'm progressive in that regard and things like that. Um, and in that case, I think there's going to be plenty of people. Um, in terms of people who I think might consciously know that something is up and be unwilling to say something, I think what would have to define that person is them being kind of cowardly. Um, I think like you'd have to pick some, I'd have to think of somebody who I am confident enough, sorry, I'm like filling my slippers, I'm confident enough in the kind of intellect of, but don't have any confidence in their kind of integrity. Um, which is actually a hard question to answer. Uh, I can't really, I don't really know if I can think of anybody who would really fall into that category. Like somebody who I was very confident knew that trans identity was a problem, but also very confident that they would not have the guts to, you know, stand up and say, hey, something's wrong here. Um, I, I don't know. I, I really, I genuinely don't know. <laughs> Because, okay, I'll, I'll give, like, an, an, this is not an example of that, but I've mentioned before, there's a clip of Stephen Merchant basically talking about trans identity, and he says something to the effect of, um, well, I, I, I must admit, that confuses me. Um, like, basically, he's, like, talking about, like, trans identity, and yeah, he's basically saying, like, he's confused by it, and it doesn't really make much sense, um, specifically talking about Caitlin, formerly Bruce Jenner, um, and being, like, Oh, so, because basically someone was, someone was saying, like, oh, well, Norm MacDonald was the person he was talking to, and Norm MacDonald was making a point about how um, Caitlyn Jenner was the first woman to win, like, a gold, or something like that, like, basically saying that. And then, see, Metro was like, oh, so she was a woman before she even transitioned, or whatever. And then he's like, now, I must admit, that that is confusing to me. But the thing is, like, the way he's saying it is, like, He's confused, but he knows he's not supposed to be confused. Like, he's confused, but he knows he's supposed to, like, go along with it. And that that's an ex and I think that's, like, a thing. I think there are lots of people who would be, like, um... I guess, like, because that's an interesting question. Like, how many people could I talk to and be reasonably confident that they would agree with what I'm saying but they themselves aren't actively gender critical. And I think the answer to that is quite a lot. I think there are a huge number of people who, if they were just having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a gender critical person, would be like, yes, I hear what you're saying, and that makes sense, and I can completely understand where you're coming from, and I think that's a very reasonable thing to believe. But they themselves wouldn't, you know, say, oh yeah, I believe that. I think that's an interesting question. I don't know, though. All right, boom. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like to an extent, like obviously people talk about like the whole thing of, um, oh, I, I don't know to what extent this is actually misrepresenting the situation, but basically the whole thing of like most people support socialist or to be more accurate, kind of socially democratic policies. But when you refer to it as like socially democratic or whatever, then people disagree with it. Like basically arbitrary teams determine a lot of people's political allegiance. I definitely think that's true in the case of trans identity. I think, like, the fact that opposition to trans identity is generally characterized as being on the right uh, and supporting trans identity is generally characterized as being on the left, I think is a very strong reason why most people support trans identity. Why a disability? And then I'd be the one who is excluded? So the medical model allows me to imagine that there is a very distinct line between line. them and me. A line that is located in their bodies where the problem is. And if the line is located in their bodies, wouldn't that imply that disabled people 
are only like half disabled, which, you know, I mean, just seems a bit of a weird way of phrasing it. It also presents an obvious solution. Get him out of here. I think that Jen- Really? <laughs> I'm sorry, but again, like this is one of those weird things where it's like, like you're the one saying that. I think I made this joke about um, like Helen Joyce's comments where like Helen Joyce said a series of things, none of which amounted to implying anything violent. And it's like, if you hear that and your thought is, well, we need to get rid of them. Like that's, that's you, you saying that. And it's weird that that's what you would think is being said. And yeah, I mean, I'm not saying, you know, completely ignore, uh, what's it called? Um, dog whistles, because I, I can recognize that sometimes people will say things that are, you know, intended to get across kind of evil ideas. And that it's obviously disingenuous for those people when called out on expressing evil ideas and be like, hey, you know, I didn't say anything evil. If, if you think I'm saying something evil, then that's on you. Obviously, that's the thing people can do. And it's disingenuous when people do that. But again, as far as I can tell, literally, again, obviously, I realize we're in the middle of like a thought here because of where I happened to pause it last time. But basically, the context is that Philosophy Tube is talking about basically just the characterization of disabled people as disabled. And Philosophy Tube seems to be implying that the obvious solution to characterizing disabled people as disabled, the solution to that is to get them out of here, which I don't know, maybe maybe that's not supposed to be intended in a, um, to me, that sounds like you're talking about something anti-humanitarian. Gender dysphoria does a similar thing. Because here's the real secret of the universe. If you want to change sex, it's possible. Is it? For all I mean, it's possible, to be fair, it is possible for clownfish. Of human history, we've had this divide between men and women. But if you want to cross that divide, if you want to trans... Hold on a minute. Is Philosophy Tube... Oh, wow. So, just for record, Philosophy Tube just there admitted, in essence, that the categories of man and woman are sex categories. Because uh, changing sex was just conflated with changing from being a man to a woman. Those two things were conflated. Meaning that, so according to Philosophy Tube, this is officially, I, that's on the record, let's go back and listen to it again. If you want to change sex, yeah. it's possible. For all of human history, we've had this divide between men and women. But if you want to cross that divide, if you want to transcend it entirely. So there we go, like, basically, the only logical reading of um, and uh, yeah, Laura Tyrell is saying, I hate it when trans activists conflate gender and sex like this. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, so obviously this was also something you saw on my uh, main channel when I was responding to Jon Stewart. This is something that the uh, expert on Jon Stewart's um, show did. Conflating biologically female with woman, conflating biologically male with men. That is, I think, unambiguously what Philosophy Tube just did there. Which is interesting because then you've got a question, at that point, literally, the only question that matters in terms of debunking philosophy tube would be, can you change biological sex? Because according to philosophy tube's own logic just presented there, if you can't change biological sex, then you can't change whether you're a man or a woman. Um, so let's see if a good argument is given for that you can't change, or sorry, that you can change biological sex and be neither. It's possible. And also, that, so there you get not only that, but you can also be neither sex. In particular, hold in one hand all of masculinity. Thor. Oh, no, so wait, hold on a minute. Why are we getting masculine? Okay, so <laughs> this, is, this is such a big jumble. So now we're getting masculinity thrown in there as well. Masculinity being the kind of arbitrary, socially constructed idea of what should be expected of a man. So now that's in there. I, I don't know what that's doing now. So which is it? Because you started off talking about changing your biological sex. And then you were talking about, as, as if conflating them, talking about changing from being a man to a woman. And now you're talking about masculinity. So, okay, let's see. Leonidas, Beowulf, James Bond, Andrew Tate, Jordan Peterson, all of them. And in the other, hold 
Just two milligrams of estrogen a day. And tell me which one is more powerful. <laughs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? I'm so confused there. Is that... Th that sounds like biological essentialism. Like, the way that's phrased sounds like biological essentialism. Just instinctively to me. Because it sounds like it's suggesting that, like, the, you know, kind of a psycho sociological phenomenon of masculinity can be conflated with estrogen as if estrogen is um, comparable in terms of being a kind of psychosociological phenomenon as if basically saying in other words that estrogen cancels out masculinity which is biological essentialism um, it's it's insane now to be fair maybe maybe it's saying it differently maybe it's saying I say it, sorry. I, sometimes I use the word it, and I don't mean to be, I just use the word it because I mean, like, maybe it's being said differently. Um, maybe what philosophy tube is actually trying to say is you have the sociological thing, masculinity, and then you have the kind of more biological thing, estrogen, and that the biological thing cancels out the sociological, or is more powerful than the sociological thing. Maybe that's what's being said. But in that case, that would seem to be the argument that the biological is more significant than the sociological would seem to be a gender critical argument. Um, yeah, Loris Tyrell says, why don't they just say you can change secondary sex characteristics, but not biological sex? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's the thing. I, I am loath to admit that there are ways of kind of theorizing trans identity to be way more coherent than it is. And often, you know, because I spend so much time responding to people like Philosophy Tube, I do find myself thinking, well, you know, trans identity, there's literally no way of theorizing it to be remotely coherent. Um, but every now and then, I do encounter somebody who uh, touches on, at least to some extent, um, presenting, like, an idea of trans identity that at least makes sense, at least I can understand what they're saying. Um, that doesn't mean they're right, but it means they at least clear that first important hurdle of I can tell what it is they're trying to argue. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Obviously, yeah, uh, cross-sex hormones, that's not likely to be a particularly safe thing to do. Um, the entire December is in meteorological winter, even if it isn't in astronomical winter. That is an interesting sentence, and I don't know what you mean there. So if you, you know, tell me what that means, that's quite interesting. Um, uh, okay. We live in a culture that valorizes men, treats them as the default. But when you're a trans woman, you can take all of that and just... Okay, this is troubling. The implication of that is that, you know, the way that's being phrased makes it sound as if there is some reason why a biological male who is not trans-identified can't just do that. Can't just blow away masculinity. Like, so it's kind of in a weird situation where I would almost disagree with it in two senses. First of all, I don't think that you can just blow away the expectations of masculinity if you're a trans woman, so-called. And one of the reasons I know that is because, if you like, and I'm going to use this term, transphobia exists. In other words, when people see, and what I'm really talking about is um, kind of gender non-conforming phobia, you know, a phobia, a GNC phobia, if you like. Uh, but basically, when people see specifically that in trans-identified people, there are people who will get angry at that. Like, there are probably people making fun of Philosophy Tube on various parts of the internet for the way Philosophy Tube presents, which is to say, because Philosophy Tube does not present in a more stereotypically masculine way. And Therefore, Philosophy Tube is simply wrong to say that if you are a trans-identified male, you can just blow away the expectations of masculinity. Philosophy Tube is still going to be held to those expectations, at least insofar 
as philosophy tube is going to be uh, viewed negatively by some people who think the fact that philosophy tube presents in a feminine way is something to be made fun of. So that's point one. Of course, there's the other aspect. I don't think that philosophy tube or any transidentified male can just so effortlessly uh, get rid of their conditioning uh, of you know masculinity and the expectation of masculinity that they will kind of place upon themselves. I don't think that's something that you can just get rid of. But there's also the fact that even if we grant that to some extent this can happen, that to some extent people can just kind of, you know, wish away uh, these expectations, I think it's incredibly harmful to suggest that non-trans identified people are in some way less capable of doing that. Um, and I, I don't, I don't know, I don't get it, because it's kind of like, these left tubers, like left tube kind of originally came from like basically male feminists, if you like, you know, self-identified male feminists. Um, that's where it came from. And I, I, you have to like wonder when you see so many kind of trans activists so brazenly talking about the categories of man and woman and, you know, the relationship of trans identity to that basically as if the only way to be a non-masculine man is to be a trans-identified male. When you see that, you think, like, what the hell was feminism to these people? Ever. Like, I, I genuinely don't know. Um, uh, that That's an interesting... Wait, let me... Uh, sorry, I'll just see what else is being said. Um... Okay, um, uh, so yeah, sorry, Loris, I'm trying to read your comment just because it looked like it could be interesting, but I kind of, I guess I'm just gonna have to read out loud, otherwise I'll just be sat here in silence. So it's the distinction between being for itself and in itself. Being in itself is just things as they are before consciousness defines them. So a tree is just a collection of wood, biological sex is a production of gametes, being for itself as a mode of existing consciousness, so biological sex then takes a load a load of social meaning, like men are strong and providers and women are mothers and us and emotional. Yeah, I mean, I would agree that is a way to distinguish gender and sex. Um, but yeah, okay, I'll power through. But yeah, so, I mean, the important thing is there. Just what, what philosophy tube is saying so far, it, it's insane. It's mental. Okay. And you can be happier for it. In a male-dominated gender hierarchy... You, you don't... Ha yeah, okay, you can be happier. And by the way, most people will be happier when they kind of, you know, shake gendered expectations. Um, yeah, undeniably. And I think society as a whole will be better off if society as a whole kind of gets rid of gendered expectations. What does that have to do with trans identity? It's quite troubling to suggest it does have anything to do with trans identity where it is assumed that men are better than women and that masculinity is superior to femininity, there is no greater threat than the existence of trans women, who despite being born male and inheriting male privilege, choose to be female instead. Okay, there, okay, I, I wanna, just off the bat right there, that is, there is no threat there, unless you have an incredibly simplistic understanding of patriarchy. Um, like everybody should be able to understand I mean, I, 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 yeah, I have no idea what that's supposed to be saying, because then, like, surely you could phrase that to basically say that trans, if trans identity disproves patriarchy, sorry, yeah, if trans identity disproves patriarchy, surely it also disproves feminism, because if you say trans identity disproves patriarchy because patriarchy says that being a man is better than being a woman, um, but trans identified people go against that because many of them were born biologically male and yet chose to be women. Well, you could also say it debunks feminism because feminism says that men have advantages that women don't have. And that is disproved by the fact that there are many men who decide they want to be women or biological males who decide they want to be women. And why would they do that? If So I, I don't see how it creates you know any kind of 
threat. Uh, yeah, Lisa Michelle mentions liking, so let's, let's do that real quick while everyone's here. Everyone, uh, get your fingers over the, the like button, uh, the thumbs up button, and three, two, one, like spike. Boom. By embracing our own femaleness and femininity, we in a sense cast a shadow of doubt over the supposed supremacy of maleness and masculinity. I, I don't I don't get why. Like I genuinely don't understand why. By the way, especially when you consider the fact that most trans identified males aren't um representatives or embodying the kind of most uh uh, kind of idealized view of masculinity anyway. So maybe some of them are, but like a lot of the time not. So yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything. Like it, it's just, it's not true. And it would need to be far more substantial um, to make that point. Uh, Lisa Michelle says, oh, hi, Lydia. Uh, but also Lisa Michelle says, um, hot take, part of male privilege is being in a male body. Yeah, I think that would depend kind of on how you define privilege, because I think some people might say that privilege um, is necessarily kind of sociological. Like, it's a bit like, for example, could I say that, uh, and I think it's actually true, that um, black people are, like, physically faster. There is admittedly another thing that would seem to be biologically, uh, you know, true of black people, which might be considered a privilege, but let's take being faster. Um, and possibly even stronger. I, I'm sure that, like different races, I mean, for example, Polynesians put on muscle mass faster than lots of other races, which is due to, um, you know, like, I guess all of their time getting everywhere by, you know, islands and stuff. But anyway, the point is, could you then say that that's like a kind of um, the, a black privilege is being able to run faster? Um you know, I don't know. That's just a, an interesting, complicating factor there. Um, yeah, it's a black pill idea that it sucks to be in a female body regardless of who's in power or in society. Yeah, I, yeah, I get you. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, I can see the logic there. Uh, and I think that would definitely, like, that idea of... Um, I mean, it's kind of like, it's sort of like disability discourse in a way, although the fact it's like disability discourse kind of reveals the reality of the situation right there where it's sort of like there is that question of will disabled people always be disabled or is is disability like a societal thing and to me i think the answer has to be um the answer has to be like no i'm being disabled is disabled and there isn't like a societal solution to it and i think one could make an argument that insofar as yeah women are physically less able uh in quite a few ways than males uh that that's also you know that kind of disadvantage is always going to be a thing um but yeah um of course i mean then then you get into the question though of do, do we want to go down like the transhumanism route because that could be a solution, but I feel like a lot of people get kind of justifiably quite uncomfortable about that possibility. Um, and certainly I would, but obviously, I mean, that might, I, I would think that could function. I mean, yeah, obviously, I guess like if you basically just completely mess with people's biology, you can do anything. Um, but yeah, I feel like some people that, that might make them uncomfortable. But then of course, I guess the question of, you know, if if one understands that I am privileged insofar as I have the body I do, maybe it's not my cool. Maybe I shouldn't be allowed to uh, pontificate about whether or not transhumanism is acceptable because maybe for um, the people who are actually meaningfully disadvantaged by certain like biological realities, maybe transhumanism to them is like A-OK. -okay. Um, yeah, I would love to hear what chat think about artificial wombs. I used to like, I, I went through a phase of like being very pro- um, artificial wombs because I was like pretty much I went through a phase of like thinking that basically pregnancy is like a disease in that like because because it kind of is you know like it causes a lot of physical problems probably a lot of mental problems most of the time 
uh, it's like really rough for women. And I was like, yeah, maybe, maybe we should just have a situation where you just got artificial wombs and no woman ever has to get pregnant. I think the thing is the argument against it, the first argument against it would of course be like sociologically, you know, it, it just seems, it just seems so matrixy and like dystopian and blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, it, so I don't know. It's one of those things. I feel like I will say, I guess the good news is that as a idea, it's so far away from like what needs to be our top priority right now that, I think we're we're blessed to be a generation um, so overburdened with easy problems to solve, because it means we don't even have to worry about like these difficult, complex problems. It's like literally we've got like so many problems that we could solve easily. So like I get to be like, oh, in terms of just making the world dramatically better, there's probably like. 10, well, I don't know, I don't even know why I'm numbering it, but there's so many things which just, like, we could solve it and it wouldn't even be hard. Um, so once we solved all those problems, you know, like, sustainable living and all that kind of stuff, then we can start worrying about whether or not we should use technology to um, make, uh, you know, pregnancy less of a burden. I think that some cis people are made a little bit anxious by that. I think they'd like to... Why? Wait, hold on. Why would, why would cis people be anxious about... Are you just conflating, like, cis people with proponents of the patriarchy? Because that seems like a weird thing to say. Why would cis people um, be anxious about trans identity disproving patriarchy? Which, by the way, it doesn't. To imagine that male and female are naturally occurring, stable... Also, like, you've got the fact of, like, there are so many cultures that have had third genders and kind of messed around with their gender roles, and they've been patriarchal. ...categories, and that we are just the exceptions that prove the rule. I think they like to imagine that there is a clear line between us and them. Uh, okay, I will agree with that. I think there is a very strong argument that many people will say that trans-identified people are the exception that proves the rule. The thing is, I think the people who are saying that often are kind of right, you know? Like, the thing is, if you wanted to be an exception that disproves the rule, you would be a gender non-conforming woman or a gender non-conforming man. But if you are a gender non-conforming woman who then comes out and says, actually, I am a man, then you are being an exception that proves the rule. Because it's like, well, this person was an exception, but, you know, actually, that you know, clearly the fact that they were a gender non-conforming woman was so hard for them that now they've ch changed into a man, thus proving the rule. So I wouldn't say trans-identified people are the exception that proves the rule. What I would say is that trans-identity itself is the act of the exception proving the rule. It's the act of somebody who would be an exception somebody who is gender non-conforming, actually being like, no, never mind, I'm going to prove the rule by saying that as a gender non-conforming biological male, I'm in fact a woman. Um, PT wants a matriarchy where men are in power, LMAO. That sounds like um, very funny. Uh, <laughs> I, I, to be honest, I'm not sure what the context was for why you said that, but um, yeah. Um, uh, Loris Tyrell says, I think abolition of the family is key to abolishing patriarchy. I don't know about that. Um, I'm not sure. And, and then, of course, I mean, there is also the other aspect of, um, you know, I mean, does, what about what about the idea? And this is just genuinely like, you know, I'm just throwing this out there. Is there a sense in which like um, maybe certain social injustices like patriarchy maybe can't be solved without causing other issues? Um, because, you know, sure, you, you abolish the family, but I don't know, will that necessarily make, will that lead to the greatest flourishing in general for people? I'm not sure. Um, and the concept of gender dysphoria draws that line. It locates the problem within our bodies and also creates a class of specialists who can patrol that line and decide who gets across. Hell, there are some trans people who like that line being there. 
there are some. Well, you literally conflated, like you've outed yourself as a trans medicalist in this video. Not naming names. Who say, I'm a real transsexual. I've been diagnosed with the mental illness that is gender dysphoria. Not like all these tenderqueer non-binary teenagers with their green hair and their Lucian yak dungarees. And I'm like, babes, you've been diagnosed with baloney. Stafford Beer famously said that the purpose of a system is what it does. And what he meant was there's no point claiming a system's job is to do something it consistently fails to do. It I don't know, that seems kind of dumb, right? You can say something's job is to do something it consistently fails to do. It functions how it functions, it gives the outputs it gives. With that outlook, I don't think anyone can really claim that the NHS's current system exists to help trans patients. It might occasionally... You know, what, actually, so sorry, that comment there, I, I was just, I wasn't listening there, but basically that comment just there about like, it, you can't say something's function is to do that, which it fails to do. It gets to something which I've realized, which is the way trans identified people argue about like definitions of biological sex basically betrays that they don't have, like in their mind, um, the idea of something being broken becomes conceptually incoherent because they seem to have this idea that if something doesn't do something, then that's not its function. But the definition of a broken thing is something that isn't doing what it was functioned to do. And of course, what Philosophy Tube just said there of, well, you know, if the system isn't doing something, then that isn't its function, basically means that you can't have a broken system. So yeah, according to, in fact, actually, I would argue, is there even a crisis in the British healthcare system? Because Philosophy Tube just said that if, um, you know, a system isn't doing something, then that's not its function. So that means, you know, surely a crisis would be the British healthcare system failing to do what it should be doing. But if its function is actually what it is doing, then it's impossible for it to fail at what it should be doing. Boom. I occasionally do that as a side effect, but in my opinion, its real function, its main output is control. NHS gender clinics exist as part of a larger system that is gender itself, and they reduce variety within that system. Parades aren't designed to teach us anything. They're designed to humiliate us. They're designed to- I feel like I recognize that guy. Um... To make us suffer the indignity of doing something entirely pointless so that sadistic f shite scoff can demonstrate he has power over us. The more pointless the activity, the greater our humiliation and the more power he feels. I don't know if I agree with that. Just for the record, like I know this is completely irrelevant, but I don't feel like that's the function of military parades. Um, and I kind of feel like military parades, for as long as you live in a world where militaries are necessary, I feel like military parades are pretty cool. Because it's basically just a way of being like, yeah, you know, um, like it's, it's, I guess like my, my problem is the central argument there is that pointless, pointless things that are just done for no reason, are bad. And my argument would be that, to be honest, I feel like pointless things that are done for no reason are kind of one of the basises of um, a society and a community. Like Christmas. Like Christmas is an obvious example. Uh, a lot of the things that happen around Christmas are completely pointless. Like wearing a Christmas jumper. But I still do it. Or like eating turkey at Christmas. But it's not like, oh, we've got to eat Christmas, uh, turkey at Christmas. Because, it, you know, even though we could be eating any other meat, they want to exercise control over us. It's like, no, you do it just because having traditions is one of the ways we kind of get to know each other and things like that. I sort of feel like it's a similar thing with, like, military parades. Um, and, I mean, any kind of parade, to be honest. Right? Like, it's a pointless thing. It doesn't achieve anything. But for a moment, everyone can kind of uh, come together and be like, yes, we are a nation state. Or, yes... We are, uh, you know, I don't know if it's like a village fate. Like, yes, we are a village. It's just a way to have a community. I don't really buy this idea that it's just to disappoint everybody. Um, it's kind of like that whole thing about like school uniforms, right? Where, uh, I don't know, like some people think school uniforms are there to basically make everybody feel powerless and have no identity. But I feel like it's more just so that people have a sense of identity within their community. And that's just me. And we can sit here and pretend all we want that there must be some more noble war effort type purpose to all this walking around in f***ing rectangles, but there isn't one. The thing about Foucault is that one could easily pronounce his name Fucko, which sounds like you're kind of playfully, aggressively insulting somebody. 
We do parades so Scheitzkopf can feel like a tough guy. That's what parades are for. It I once accidentally worked at a military parade event. It was called Tattoos, so I thought it was going to be a tattoo convention. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a weird name for a military parade. I don't know. But, like, has anyone seen, um, like, the Gurkhas? Uh, they're like... I think they're a branch of the British military. They were certainly a branch of the British Imperial Ministry. Ministry? Minute military. But they look they just look so badass. Um and I realize if I'm talking about British stuff, I should probably say badass. But screw it, I'm saying badass. Um just like with like their guns and stuff and their uniforms and the way like they just march in uh tune and like if I were to see a bunch of Gurkhas marching down a street, like surround, like that. They've got like a tank, and they've got like these big flags, and they've got their guns. They're like walking in perfect lockstep. I wouldn't think to myself, "Wow, those guys sure must feel humiliated right now." I'd be like, "Wow, oh, that is awesome. That is the coolest thing I've ever seen." Um, anyway, the police do parades on my country, or in in my country. Yeah. Um, that's that's kind of interesting. The police. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it depends how good the police are, right? Like, if if they've earned it. Like, if, if you've got a country where, like, the police actually do a good job, then maybe, maybe that's fair enough. Um, I mean, I guess that's why, I feel like one of the reasons why the military is better than the police is because the military don't have to and shouldn't have to do anything most of the time. Like North Korea, for example. The military doesn't really have to do anything because North Korea doesn't really engage in any active military conflicts. So it's kind of like their military can just exist to show off. And there's no like um, taint of, you know, reality where they're actually very disappointing because they never actually had to do anything. They just have to stand around. Um, so I guess that would be my solution. The army should just be for military parades, um, not actually for fighting, because if they did fight, then they would probably in some way disappoint. And then you'd be like, oh, it kind of kind of takes the fun out of the parade now, because that's the issue of cops, right? Because police actually have to do things inevitably. Well, I don't want to say inevitably, that's a bit fatalistic, but, you know, like uh as is typical of most government institutions it ends up being rubbish and you know you get terrible individual policemen but you also get of course systemic issues with the way the police force conduct themselves uh, whereupon most people end up having somewhat negative feelings towards the police and therefore the idea of the police doing a parade it's probably not going to reflect well on them but as they always say the firemen know what's up like the firemen if the firemen did a parade, everyone would be on board of it. I don't know what it is. Like, I guess it's because a fireman's job is very uncomplicated. Like, all they have to do is put out the fire. Um, whereas, I guess, like, for, um, like, healthcare workers and policemen, it's it's a bit more complicated. I think that's, that's my theory as to why firemen... I, I refuse to believe that firemen are just, like, naturally better people. I think it's because their job's a little bit easier. Um, it's just, like... Just go in there, put out the fire. Um, you know, police is a little bit more complicated. It's like, go in there, stop the guy, but also try not to use lethal force, but you might need to use lethal force. Um, and also, you should probably try not to get shot yourself. And also, you need to make sure you've got the right guy and blah, blah, blah. Like These are problems that don't really exist for a fireman. Um, but someone, yeah, Loris does make a good point. Firemen are hot. Um, I don't think I've ever seen cops in a parade. Yeah, I have seen um, Arnold Schwarzenegger dressed up as Turbo Man in a parade. In my opinion, the concept of gender dysphoria pathologizes transness, so people can avoid. What if we had a turf military parade, all marching in uniform? The thing about that is, <laughs> it reminds you of I saw again. Oh, God. Okay, yeah. So, basically, I'm going to... Let's do this. So, okay, basically, I mentioned before how um, I got a... Uh, you know, th there's this idea that there is a 
a trans. Uh, I guess I'm not going to try and avoid using um, bad words, so I'll just say it. Genocide going on. Um, you know, we heard that. And I think I mentioned recently how there was somebody who, like, argued that, um, like, we're... They argued... So they set, posted, like, a list of the different steps of genocide. And then they argued that we're on, like, stage six or something like that. And stage six was literally starting paramilitary death squads. And I was like, um... Well, no, that's not happening. <laughs> there aren't paramilitary death squads uh, in in the UK, at least. Um, but obviously, yeah, that comment about like us having a, a turf military parade, or did you say gender critical? I can't remember. But um, yeah, at that point, I mean, at least uh, at least we'd be halfway towards param. You know, we'd, we'd at least have the paramilitary part sorted for the um, the paramilitary death squads. Uh, but yeah, the other reason I was thinking about it is because I saw someone post it again, and they they argued that we were on like stage eight. But it's like, so like it was pretty much the same list, and I can't even remember what stage eight was. I think it was like, I think it was literally like something like construction of the death camps or something like that. And I was like, who's constructing these death camps? Um. Uh. In USA, we have parades for Memorial Day, Labor Day, and the 4th of July. You also had a parade when um, Chicago won the uh, World Series, or whatever it's called. Um, I can't believe it's called the World Series. That's so dumb. <laughs> right. Avoid uh, the endearing truth that there is no line, and that really we aren't so different. And so that some of them can avoid asking themselves the big question. Given that human beings can change sex, do you want to? What? <laughs> what the hell is that? I... I mean... That's... <laughs> I mean... Uh, whatever. I, I genuinely... I don't know. And like, the red and the blue pill thing? But like... So if... Presumably me taking the blue pill would be me not changing sex right. But isn't that implying that not changing sex is, like, basically choosing to live in ignorance? I don't know, what. Okay, I'm not gonna, like, break it down too much. Um, but also, I don't know, isn't that, like, whole thing... Like, isn't it kind of, like, the whole all, like, homophobic people are secretly gay? Like, the implication of what Flans for Tube just said there is the reason why people don't like this is because... If they recognize that it's possible to change sex, by the way, Philosophy Tube has not demonstrated that it's possible to change sex, but whatever. If um, you recognize it's possible to change sex, uh, then the reason why uh, gender critical people or whatever, transphobic people, uh, the reason why they don't like that is because they don't want to be confronted with the question of whether or not they want to change sex, with the implication being that they might secretly want to change sex. In other words, that they are basically trans people in denial, or eggs, as I've heard it referred to. Um, and of course, that is actually quite a harmful, harmful, harmful uh, belief to have, because it implies that like all transphobic people are trans, or a large number, which, you know, would basically be blaming trans-identified people for their own discrimination, which just seems like a weird thing to do. And it's why I would generally say the whole, like, oh, you're a homophobe, that must mean you're gay. It's kind of, like, not a good thing to say. Um, but... <laughs> I'm... Uh, Lepto... I'm not going to say your whole name, Lepto. Um, I'm racking my brains trying to figure out the reaction he was going for with the Matrix reference. Impressed? Amazed? Taken back by his originality? 
<laughs> I don't know why the reference to originality makes me think about Uncle Adams, who I hope is a reference everybody gets. But um, basically, yeah, I do think like these videos that they're, they're obviously not made to change people's minds. Like these, ooh, I mean, look, I, I'm being kind of mean. So I was gonna say, oh, all kind of bread tube, left tube videos of preaching to the choir. I can recognize that on some level, um, you know, most of the internet and indeed most of discourse, if we're being honest, is preaching to the choir. But I, for example, would not say that of my own videos. Now, I, I will say, obviously, what I'm doing right here is far too tedious and long to be probably of any interest to a trans uh, ally or trans kind of activist or whatever else. Um, I would not expect, you know, I'm not so deluded as to think, oh yeah, you know, my, uh, uh, somebody who's a trans activist will uh, sit down for a two hour video, watch me speak for half an hour about the various festivities um, in the post Christmas winter period, uh, and then get really excited when I look befuddled and confused a uh, weird matrix reference no that's not going to change their mind but what i do on my main channel now and that's one of the reasons why i started that channel uh, is the scripted tightly edited debunking videos um and the reason i do those is with the genuine hope that people will watch them and if they are, you know, I don't think that many TRAs will actually be convinced, but at least to kind of make TRAs uncomfortable, where they'll be like, oh, actually, I don't know if I can fully, um, you know, accept the nonsense that's being put out by a lot of people. That's kind of the intention of those videos. And I think they do a good job on that video, or at that purpose. I don't think this video has that function to any degree at all. Uh, like, if you're a gender critical person, this is nothing. It's just nothing. Um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, having said that, it's not as if this video would even be massively valuable, even to a, you know, trans-identified person, I don't think. Um, so, yeah. Uh, PT's vaccine video is a lot less preaching to the choir. Um, I mean, I make, I, I could, yeah, okay, maybe. I've seen it. I've seen H Bomber Guy's uh, video on vaccines, which is kind of good. The only problem I, I will admit I have with H Bomber Guy's uh, video on vaccines is that he's hyper specific with reference to the um, mRNA vaccine. That's what it's called, right? Like the measles, rumps, and rubella. Nope, I don't know. What it's, um, you know, no, he's he's specific about like that that one vaccine that everybody hates. Um, but, like, he seems to be also directing a video to people who don't want to get the COVID jab. But the thing is, like, the problem with that is that, you know, a lot of people who don't want to get the COVID jab probably are cautious about it because they don't want to, um, uh, you know, take a, a very new vaccine that's scary because it's like a new vaccine and who knows what it's going to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, can we really trust the tests when, you know, there hasn't been any long-term testing, who knows what the long-term effects are, blah, blah, blah. Um, and the thing is, H. Bomber guy just doesn't really address those concerns at all, because he puts the focus entirely on this vaccine that's been around since, like, the 90s, or maybe even 80s, to be honest, uh, where we have actually huge amounts of evidence about it. Um, that's a good point, too. People who don't get it already are looking for reasons to not take it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, sorry, yeah, the, the point is... Uh, I guess it was a good video, but I just thought it was a bit limited. Um, <laughs> the COVID jab makes you trans. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I keep seeing people on Twitter, like, complaining about the COVID jab. I think, like, my understanding is that, like, a few a few people have had, like, health issues um, or in some capacity. Like, uh, athletes collapsing on, on the pitch or whatever, or, you know, um, perhaps not called the pitch in more inferior games. But I don't know. It just seems like I, I, I struggle to respect people who are just like, they're like, oh, I know what the solution is here. It's like, you, you don't know why. You don't know anything. You have no idea what you're talking about, whoever you are. Um, I, I don't know. I don't want to be like an anti-populist kind of elitist. But I do think on some level, like the people who actually think like they have the knowledge 
I don't know, you need to like, you, you got to humble yourself. Like you, if you're just like some random person and you're just out there like, no, I know, like that's the thing, because genuinely if someone's like, oh, I don't, you know, whether it's the vaccine or whatever else, they're like, oh, I, I'm scared about it because I don't know what it is, you know, like I, you know, I'm worried that there could be something wrong with it, you know, I'm worried that it hasn't been sufficiently tested, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that that's one thing. And, you know, I'm not really going to complain about that. You do you. But like the people who are like, no, I, some random person on Twitter, I've done the research and I know what the scientists, scientists aren't telling you. It's like, I, I just, I just can't buy it. Like I can't, like that level of just like, I don't know, whatever. It's just weird. It's like the same with everything, right? Like nutrition too. It's like, if someone's like, oh, you know, um, I think that, you know, may maybe there's some, you know, we don't really know what, what exactly is the best thing to be putting in your body. Cause you know, people back in the day, you know, all the nutrition people were recommending you eat loads of carbs and you don't have very much fatty food. Whereas now the consensus is that fatty food isn't actually so bad and carbs actually are quite bad for you. So like, okay, yeah, sure. Um, that's fair enough. If you want to be a little bit suspicious about, you know, the kind of common wisdom on nutrition, that's fine, no problem. But you get the people who are just like, no, I know the truth. Vegetables are bad for you. And the healthy thing is eating an entire stick of butter with every meal. And it's like, you don't, you don't know that. You are some random loser who, to be honest, seems to be mostly basing your opinions on what to put in your body on nonsense, culture war, manosphere garbage. You don't know this. Stop acting like you do know this. It's just annoying. I don't know. Like, I hate to drop the old Dunning-Kruger uh, reference, but I just think it's a very appropriate thing, like, so much. Like, when you see the people who are just like, no, I know this. And it's like always like, they know what the scientists aren't telling. It's like, what the hell <laughs> is, like, the... And, like, then that's when... Because you're like, what would be the scientist's, like, reason for lying? And then I guess, like, you have to reach the conclusion that it's just... Like, it's got to be some kind of bizarre conspiracy. I don't know. Um, all right. Oh, Phyllis Schlafly. Schlafly? Schlaf Schlafly. Uh, I, I know about her. Uh, I think I read one of her books many, many moons ago. Um, yeah, okay. So I just needed that break just so that I could, um, you know, talk about crap, but also just to get over the uh, ridiculous Matrix thing. Yeah. I should have known that the ending of my story would be as absurd as all the rest of it. One day I got a phone call and they said, come in on Tuesday. <gasps> I don't know whether Colonel Cathcart did something. Wait, what? How's that absurd? Or whether someone ahead of me on the waiting list died. They just said it's on Tuesday. <laughs> oh no. Ah, oh, oh no. I laughed too abruptly and it made my chest hurt. Uh, it didn't really actually. Um, it kind of made my throat hurt, but it felt like it was in my chest for a second. Um, so, right. The claim there was so being told that you have a doctor's appointment makes you sad. I don't know. Like, that's just not healthy, right? Like, it's just like, it's just so sad. I wanted this appointment. And then I got that appointment. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because one of the doctors accidentally walked into a cloning machine and then there were more doctors so they were able to offer twice as many appointments? I don't know. It's like, who cares? And I thought I would be happy or excited. <laughs> oh my God. Truth, I was... You, I, I can't like read this as anything other than like addicted, like addicted to being oppressed. I mean, you know, let's be honest. Like, I don't think anyone can claim that's not an actual thing. Like there are definitely people who like, they love being victims. Um, and that's what this is. Angry. With them and with myself. I was angry because why did I... Why did I get that phone call? 
and then someone else didn't. It is by luck and a hell of a lot of privilege that I am here to tell this story. And the arbitrariness of that system compounds the survivor's guilt. Life is, um, life is arbitrary. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been quite a long series. We really should have finished it, um, last, last episode, to be honest. I mean, the thing is, we're going to finish this with time to spare. We're only, um, an hour and ten minutes in. Um, yeah, okay, so, for, 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 for um, I don't know about the Australian version of Mermaid. You're welcome to mention it. For a hell of a lot of people, by the time they finally get an appointment, they've either already self-medicated, or they've gone private, so... I literally thought that was going to be like they killed themselves and so it was just or a fate worse than death they've gone private there's hardly any point in even getting one it seems that the only way to get but yeah again this is weird because this is exactly I mentioned this like way back probably even in the first reaction this is exactly what happened to me when I tried to get um, therapy for counselling I was offered an appointment i was put on a waiting list it took i think a year and a half so i was on the waiting list for a year and a half and it meant that by the time i actually got uh you know the time i actually was able to kind of progress of it i had already gone private so literally the exact same thing happened it's not unique to trans identity trans health care in britain is not to need trans health care and there is actually a specific name for that kind of logical trap. It's called a catch-22. Wait, wait, uh, sorry, I know I didn't want to drag it out, but I wasn't paying attention. Is not to need trap. Right. So, there's hardly any point in even getting one. It seems that the only way to get trans health care in Britain is not to need trans health care. And there is actually a specific... Wait. What? Huh? Huh? How is that true? How... How... I, I, don't, I don't even get what that's supposed to be saying. So, why is the only way to get trans healthcare not to need trans healthcare? By the way, I don't think anybody needs trans healthcare. But whatever. W what is the basis for that claim? I don't need trans healthcare. I mean, again even beyond the way in which no one needs trans healthcare. I certainly don't need trans healthcare. I don't think I could get trans healthcare particularly easily, so I'm not sure what this is supposed to be on about. Um specific name for that kind of logical trap. It's called a catch twenty two. <laughs> Please finish. Oh. There is a term for that's some catch that catch 22 it's the best there is i hope that sharing my story does some good yeah i was gonna say like that's so my understanding as somebody who tries to avoid reading anything especially uh very famous books is that a catch 22 refers to and i might be completely wrong about this but my understanding is that in the book basically to get out of serving in the army you have to be proven to be insane or mentally unwell in some way but the catch-22 is that the only people who would try and leave the army are the sane people that's what that's what I've heard is like the point of the book. Admittedly, I only heard that from one random person, so I'm not sure. But is that is that it? Um, but yeah, it really isn't catch twenty two. It's just a you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. One of those situations. Um, yeah, whatever. I mean, again, like I don't know whether or not the only way to get trans healthcare is not to need trans healthcare falls under that category. But the one thing I will say is I still have no idea what philosophy you meant by saying the only people who get trans healthcare are the ones who don't need it, because that doesn't make any sense. I'm going to tell you the real s***. On YouTube, everything has to be clickable and shareable and homogenous. It's very difficult to get a message out when you make something like this, which is a little bit different. But when we try, it can be wonderful. 
I recently wrote a stage play called The Prince, which was on here in London with me in it. And we won an Off West End Award. The highest award we were eligible for. We won it. I've gone from Who cares? YouTube videos in my bedroom to award-winning playwright. Okay, but it wasn't... Aren't I right in saying that Philosophy Tube comes from an incredibly, like, privileged background? So it's not that impressive. Like, I thought, um, you know, like, that's basically every playwright, right? Like, all playwrights... Has there ever been, like, a playwright, like, a rags-to-riches playwright story? I mean, ignoring the fact not particularly rich. I swear, like, every single playwright in the world is just some, like, privileged person who was probably born in Manhattan or West London and went to, like plays every single day and then it was then like daddy i want to be a playwright can you get all of your rich friends to make it happen for me isn't that like how everybody becomes a playwright so it's not that impressive turns out when we're actually allowed to tell our own stories for a change they're pretty good oh wow <laughs> see that doesn't make any sense though because like <laughs> because the oscars exist so we all know that some really garbage films like, Crash won Best Picture. A genuine 1 out of 10 movie that is so garbage and, like, preachy and has no subtlety and all the characters are really poorly written, like, the, the most one-dimensional characters in the world, and it won Best Picture. So it's like, you know, I'm not saying that winning Best Picture counts for nothing. I would rather... Um, win Best Picture than not. Uh, Loris Terrell says Alan Bennett, and that's actually a good point. But um, okay, whatever. I mean, sorry, not not to be not to be whatever to me being completely um, debunked. But um, yeah, the thing is, you can't be like, we won Best Picture or we won Best Play, and that proves that it's good because it doesn't because Crash. Um. Are there any other, like, really bad films of One Best Picture? I mean... I don't know. I, uh... I can't, I can't think. I suppose, um... Uh, did Gladiator win Best Picture? That's not a great film. And did Braveheart won Best Picture? That's not a great film. Did? No, it didn't. It didn't, did it? No. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves didn't win. I don't know. No, it didn't. There's no way it did. I feel like that was or whatever. The play was filmed, and the filmed version is going on a streaming service called Nebula. If oh, yeah, like Shakespeare it, in Love. There's a link in the description, curiositystream.com slash philosophy tube. The way it works is you click on that link, you sign up to Curiosity Stream, and you get Nebula included as well. The whole bundle costs like $15 a year, which is ridiculously cheap for what it is. And you also get everything on Curiosity Stream included. It's like really funny that we're getting this out of it because like Philosophy Tube seems really angry. Which obviously is because like that's the character, right? Like the whole thing has been like, I'm really angry about the situation and healthcare and blah blah blah. blah, 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 blah. Which is okay, cool and all that. But at the same time, um It's really funny getting into a pitch. And it just sounds like Philosophy Tube is angry to have to be giving the pitch. It's like, um, like, and I'm so angry about trans healthcare. But you know what I'm not angry about? Squarespace making it so easy to start a website. Uh, it's a fantastic all in one platform. And I think you should all check it out right now. It's like, I don't know, it doesn't sound like a... The only thing that will make me less angry is my new mattress from the sponsor of this video, Helix Sleeps. Is that what they're called? There's loads of good stuff on there, like David Attenborough has a documentary about bioluminescence that I came across randomly on... Okay, that's not that impressive. Anyone can come across something randomly. Curiosity Stream, it's really good. It's about animals that give out light. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I knew, I knew. <laughs> I was like, there's going to be some kind of like dumb, like poetic point. 
honestly though, all I want in life, like I, I spend so much time thinking to myself, all I want is like a big TV in a dark room with like 8K resolution. And I just want to watch um, nature documentaries. Uh, you know, I guess, I, I don't know, actually, if I say 8K, I don't know how many nature documentaries are in 8K. Um, but, you know, like just, uh, and I just want to watch it and just like take it all in. That's like, that's like a, a recurring dream I have uh, in my life. Hey, Laika, um, that's fine. Uh, I might break into your house and uh, watch nature documentaries then on your big TV. That's what I'm trying to be. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> See, what's that face? That face, though, right there that I've paused on, looks like cringe. Like, that face looks like a... Uh, I know I'm cringe. Like, <laughs> that's a face of like... I can't believe I just said that. Oh. Like, that. that's what the face looks like. I'm going to donate most of the money that Nebula give me to the charity Gendered Intelligence. They're run. <laughs> 8K TV, quiet dark room, to watch philosophy tube videos. <laughs> like, hey, you want to come to my home cinema system with like surround sound? <laughs> and it's just this video run by trans people and they help educate the public about what we need. That's all from me for today. Thank you for watching and best of luck. Fly safe. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that Catch-22 is about the Air Force? That's not even cool. Like, I only care about the army. Just because, like, they're the ones actually, you know, doing the fighting, like, the face-to-face -face fighting. Who cares about the Air Force? Just a rocket drone, a Randy surely shook with pride. He checked on his equipment and made sure his pack was tied. He My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He had to sit and listen to those awful engines roar. You wait. Let's see if there's a post credit stinger. I want to see if, um... I, don't know, I would like it if there was like a TRA like cinematic universe, like right at the end, like ContraPoints shows up. Well, like you know how like ContraTubes, ContraTubes and Philosophy Points had a um, had a beef. Like maybe that could be like the Captain me, America. You... Oh, see, we did get a post credit scene. I know what I'm on about. Spend a lot of energy railing against things that you can't control. And who says I can't control them? Powerful, powerful stuff. Great, I love that. Um, I'm pretty sure Yosarian was army. Okay, really? Because, yeah, I don't know, like, Philosophy Tube just said fly safe. Um, some sort of army flying squad. Army flying squad. Like, paratroopers? Are paratroopers in the army? I always find it weird how, like, the marines are in the navy, but I also find it weird how, like, certain pilots, like, um, like, Top Gun is in the navy. And that's weird to me. Like, how is Top Gun in the Navy? Dude, you're flying, you idiot. Stupid film. It's actually called Top Gun, not, um, Sea Level Gun. It's not the Navy, yo. Patreon is making $360,000 a year. See, I don't know. Seems like, I don't want to be too controversial, but I feel like that's a lot of money. Oh, okay, there we go. <laughs> just just after, you know, not... This is not to shame Lucy Fair. Um, you know, just after the reference of getting $360,000 a year, we get uh, Lucy Fair's um, modest contribution to, to that goal for me. Um, but no, thank you very much, Lucy Fair. Uh, it's really appreciated. It says, for finishing the video. So that's good. Now I just need... Wait, so what? Um, 300... Yeah. I can't do quick maths. Uh, so like I do 360 divided by 10, which is 36,000, 72,000 people. I just need 72,000 other people to do a super chat. Um, 
of uh, and then and then 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 I've got philosophy tube beat and all is right with the world. Uh, no, yeah, thank you very much. Um, I see, did like that. See, I must admit, like sometimes I forget like the basic mental math skills I learned when I was like a kid. Um, like, and it just seems like it should be obvious. Like the whole like you know, if you want to divide something by five, you divide it by ten and then times it by two. Pretty obvious rule. Or like if you want to time something by six, you times it by ten, divide it in half, and then add on its original number. Like, give me, okay, boom, uh, give me a random number, and I'll, I'll do it. Uh, everybody, uh, a random number now. Doesn't Contra make close to a million? Contra probably does. Yeah, I wish I made close to a million. Actually, I don't know. Like, I don't really, I wouldn't, there's not really any point making that much money. I feel like it's one of those things where, like, if you, like, when you get to that level of money, like, what even is the point in it? I guess at that point, I'd probably just start, like, I feel like, wouldn't you just give it to, like, a, a charity? Um, you know, Warren Buffett. So someone says 22,000. I'm ready for this. Oh, wait, and then I've also got six. So six times six. Uh, so I've got to do this the old-fashioned way. You do six times six. Six times ten is uh, 60. And then you divide it by two. That's 30. Then you add six to 30, you've got 36. Someone else said 22,000. 22,000 uh, times ten is 44,000. Divided by two. Wait, no, that's not true. I'm an idiot. What am I on about? 22,000 times 10 is 220,000. Divided by two is 110,000. Add 22,000 is 132,000. Boom, 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 boom. I'm so good at this. Um, like, I got it. Like, 700... 7,426. 7,426 times 10 is 74,260. Divided by two is uh, 37,000, nope, yeah, 37,130, okay, no, that's impossible, no, okay, no, that doesn't count, okay, the system doesn't work, that's too, that's too, that's too difficult, I'm done, we're not doing any, we're not doing any more maths, wait, no, I want to get that, okay, what is, <laughs> what is it, it's 32,130 plus 7,000, is uh, 39,130 plus 400 is 31,530 plus 26 is 30. What I've already forgotten where I am. Wait, 39,556. Now let's check that 7426. 7426 times six. Oh my god. Wait. How am I so bad at this? Why did I even go wrong? I lost a friend somewhere. Oh, I know. Wait, I know. Wait, what? I don't even know. I give up. I give up. I don't know maths. Um... It makes these blokes boohooing that much go goofier. Um... <laughs> that was golfier for a second. That's another. I don't know. I, I'll return back to my thing of like, how can people be depressed when they got that level of money, right? Because like, I know this is a weird thing, but just when you said <laughs> that much golfier, I just thought to myself like, you know, they can just play golf, right? And like, how can you be? Um, how can anybody be? Uh, depressed when they can play infinite golf? I would. I would love to be able to play infinite golf. Like, imagine how, like, just chill that would be. Like, every single day, you just wake up, put on some terrible-looking clothes, and you just go down to the, the little fancy, like, out in nature, just swinging all day, whacking them balls. Um, yeah, that would be a great life. Maybe you also get, like, a fancy gym membership. I don't know. I've said it before, I was saying, rich people aren't allowed to be upset if rich people like what i genuinely feel like if a rich person is upset they should have all their money confiscated because clearly they don't know what they're doing with it i i guarantee you i could um i knew i would annoy people by uh, my enthusiasm for golf um yeah like I, I guarantee you i would i would it's a good system 
It's like, you know, like the whole um, marks from each according to their ability to each according to their needs. I would think, how about this, from each according to their uh, whingy inability to be satisfied to each according to their ability to be a bula and, you know, like uh, make the most of all the money. That's, I think, would be a good system. It would probably be, it would be a great system because it would maximize human happiness, which if you're a utilitarian, you know, is like the best thing. Uh, could you do a reaction? You know what? So I'm here for another half an hour. Should we start it? That'd be a weird thing to do, but I love being weird. Where did I go wrong? I lost my pen somewhere along in the... Okay, Lily Alexandre. What about, okay, in, in the business, it would be um, in, in a big pocket. Kind of rhymes. All right. Lily Alexandre's video is called Fear of Trans Bodies. Fine. We'll watch it. I don't care. What else am I going to do? Antagonize people with my enthusiasm for golf? I don't think so. Oh. I broke my computer. Wait, actually, have I? Oh, good. For a minute, I genuinely was like, oh no, it's about to crash. Um, yeah, I was actually... Um, I was thinking, actually, recently... I, I think it was because I was thinking about how... Um, Wikipedia... Like, has anyone heard the thing about how Wikipedia, they actually don't need that much money? Um, wacky browser games are also an option. Okay, you're right. You know what? I've got a solution to your, your problems in life. Uh, so I don't know if I'll be able to crop this. So let's just make sure that I haven't got any embarrassing bookmarks saved. Okay. Zero embarrassing bookmarks. This is good. Um... So, good stuff. Um, play the impossible quiz on stream. I know that uh, Tamago2474 did that. Uh, okay, so allow me to uh, present to you this. This game is called Stick Wars. I found it recently. Uh, I enjoy it. I think like it's very loud though. Wait, let me try unmuting it. Okay, I feel like there is literally zero chance that... Um, something embarrassing isn't going to appear. I don't know why, that's why, um... <coughs> See, is that, is that, isn't it, or is that, like, very loud? Oh, like, crazy, am I? I don't trust it, I feel like it's too loud. It seems loud. Um, so, like, basically, what you can do in this game is you can, basically, you take your turns fighting, but the problem is, I think I've now got it beat, so that, um... Oh, good, it's just my name. Uh, because that could have been embarrassing too. Um, but yeah, like basically, I've got it beat on like every single level now, where like I can literally give the opponent the maximum number of players and give myself the minimum number of players, and I still win just because that's the level I be on. Um, yeah, it's pretty loud. Yeah. Um, Casey, do you ever get copyright claims? Um, yes, but for very weird reasons. Um, uh, anyone here play Civilization? I play Civilization. Uh, yeah, so I get copyright claims, uh, one, on my film review channel, which actually, you know what, you've reminded me. Everybody here, I've got a little, a fun little job for you. This isn't like a, um, like a serious, hey guys, you know, help me out, blah, 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 like I need my channel to grow or anything like that. Uh, this is more like a genuinely, you know... I think this is a, a fun video of mine. Uh, so obviously I, I've started a little channel where I try and do film reviews because I like media criticism. I think it's, it's, a, it's a gay old time. Um, and I did a video, the reason why I say this isn't very serious is because I wasn't really expecting it to make get many views and I didn't work that hard on it. But, you know, it might be fun to you. It's um, a review of, or a, you know, a rough review of um, uh, the movie Jingle All The Way starring um, Arnold Swartz at N-Word. Um, so I will, I will link it to you in case, you know, you want 
uh, seeing as you reminded me of that by asking about, um, you know, like, do I ever get uh, copyright strikes? Uh, the other context in which I get copyright strikes is I will occasionally upload full videos to my channel, um, f like other people's full videos, because I need to like, uh, it's a, a variety of reasons every single time, but I have my reasons for it. Yeah, the movie has Baby Anakin Skywalker in it. Okay, that's actually, so as you can see, uh, I've got a little hat. Now, basically, the this game, I, I got addicted to it for a little while, and I kind of got over it. Of course, I also remember the time when I played um, uh, Happy Wheels. Remember that time I played Happy Wheels? That was fun. Of course, if I was really a maverick, I could do the whole uh, Destiny thing, where I play a game and I um, listen to something. But I just don't know if I'm that much of a maverick, you know. So, yeah, basically, the, the thing is, the reason why this game is incredibly easy to beat is because, like, okay, well, that didn't even work. But basically, the the people on the other side aren't, like, smart enough to, you know, know how to, like, climb. climb. Like, they don't realize the benefit of being up in the air. So on a level like this, all you have to do is... You know, and also you can just knock them off like that. But yeah, and then they're just down there. It's pretty, pretty pointless. Um, yeah, I really do need to get onto my um, Harry Potter playing, which I, I did promise. Uh, I don't want to make a, a liar of myself. I don't want to uh, be writing checks with my mouth that my computer can't cash. Is that the phrase? Uh, because, yeah, I haven't actually, I don't know, I, it's been a while since I have felt like I could justify coaching and just playing um, old PlayStation 2 games, you know, I'm really not, not on that kind of mindset, but I think at some point someone's got to do it, you know. So yeah, as you can see, it's not a very exciting because there's not really a challenge to it. I just wanted to uh, show you, you know, the basic situation. Um, and the thing is, you might be like, well, I'll just jump down. But then the problem is, if I jump down, then it wouldn't be exciting because I would just die because they would just shoot me. So, you know, tis what it is. Of course, the other thing we could play is a uh, Grand Theft Auto. Maybe we should play that, actually. That's way more fun than um, than this than this crap. Oh, okay, I missed. Um, you got the PlayStation 2 emulator. Yes. Um... Are you supporting the Turf Industrial Complex by buying a new Hogwarts game? Honestly, I don't own anything. I I, I don't own anything. No, I I have a a PlayStation Three, and that's it. That's the most recent um, console I own, and part of it is because I genuinely I, I I lack the commitment to play games anything close to like their their completeness like for a while i was getting every new assassin's creed game as it dropped and i think after i'd got like the sixth game in the series i realized maybe i shouldn't be doing this when i haven't even finished the first game yet you know maybe there's something a little bit ridiculous going on um so yeah i'll show you this bang head that's what it does with your headshot it's pretty cool i actually know what I'll, just before i uh, i kill this guy oh okay is he gonna move Okay, I'll show you this. Wait, I'll turn on the volume very briefly. Okay, everybody, uh, prepare for your ears to die horribly. Okay, wait. That's okay, so check out this now. Ready? Boom, boom, boom. Isn't that satisfying? Uh, speaking of copyright, does anyone want to hear a, um, a band... I wonder if the PlayStation 3 emulators are working out. Yeah, they might be. Uh, yeah, because the original reason I got a PlayStation 2 emulator is because I my PlayStation 2 doesn't work. So I was like, well, I'm not going to do all that. Um, isn't G GTA, like, crazy misogynistic? <laughs> Sorry. So my brain was just working at a million miles an hour, and it came up with um, the question, what is, like, what would be, like, a game that's, like, hilariously really misogynistic and then the first thought i had 
was, um, and I don't want it to sound suspicious, I even have this as a referent in my brain, but like um, one of those like kind of uh, like kind of online like dating games, but like the dating games where like they're kind of borderline pornographic because it's like the goal is to like have sex. So like you kind of, you meet like an anime girl and then it will give you like options of like, what do you do? Do you, um, you know, invite her back to your place or whatever else, you know, whatever, whatever move you do. And then you have to like kind of through navigating the different dialogue options, get yourself to the point where you can then, um, you know, do adult activities with this person, uh, with this anime girl. Um, and that, that's what my brain was like thinking in terms of just something more misogynistic than GTA. Um, um, Anyway, yeah, does anyone want to hear a... Oh, wait, actually, I don't think I can play it to you. Can I? Oh, yeah, I can. Wait, can I? Oh, yeah, I can. Does anybody want to hear... Oh, wait, no, I can't. Wait, can I? <laughs> no, I don't think I can, actually. I wanted to play this um, this band from when I was at school. It's not a band I was in, but I just found it recently, rediscovered it. Okay, no, let's... um. Uh... Oh wow, on TV Tropes, I kept getting ads for an anime game where you raise a child to be your girlfriend. Okay, yeah. See, I will admit, you know, and um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you know, I, I shouldn't... Well, I think, you know, these exist everywhere, actually. So uh, you don't need to worry too much about the origin of, of how I've encountered these adverts. Suffice it to say that I, um, you know... <sighs> Well, I suppose it's it's not unrelated to my uh, use of PlayStation 2 emulators, but it's also not unrelated to the fact that I have a film review channel. Basically, I have to use some... Uh, I have to go to some choice websites in order to gain access to some of the media I like to engage with. No, wait, no, that still sounds bad. What I mean is that I, to... <laughs> I'm talking about films that aren't... Um, adult films okay we, we clear on that but while the films aren't adult films the films the sites are still dodgy because i'm going to those sites so i can find uh downloadable versions of the films so i can use them to edit there we go that's that's the story all of that was to then say that of course on those different sites you will see um some adverts and the one that i see um often is uh this one that's like i think it says like the tagline's like you won't last five seconds playing this game <laughs> which like when i first saw it i thought to myself oh so like it's like a really hard game well like you die very quickly but um eventually not by trying to play the game for the record because even if that were of interest to me, I wouldn't dare click on like some random ad on a dodgy website. But, um, uh, oh, a rat. Yeah. So uh, there, let's say that I was on, I was on a rat site. There we go. Um, but yeah, basically the point is it turned out actually the reason why you would only last five seconds, um, playing that game or rather you wouldn't last five seconds playing that game is because the game was so sexy that you would immediately achieve climax upon playing it. Um, and I thought to myself, that doesn't seem, honestly, even desirable, right? Like, that isn't, like, how's that a good outcome? <laughs> you know, like, like I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want that in any game. I wouldn't want to start playing a game and then like, now I've got to clean myself, and like, like I've got to like change my pants and everything. That's not good. I don't know, like... That just seems like... That doesn't seem like a very good... It doesn't seem like a selling point to me, really. I think they should be like, you know... Oh, you'll kind of slowly start to enjoy yourself, and eventually you will build up to, uh, you know, very satisfying, um, you know... Uh, sexual ecstasy but I don't think yeah I don't think the idea of like uh, just 
boom, immediately. Like, five seconds and boom, you're there. I don't think that's great. Um, 13-year-old boys aren't thinking that far ahead. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I genuinely don't understand who clicks on these uh, videos. Um, or rather, like, adverts. Like, I don't understand, like... It just makes no sense to me. Because it's like... I mean... The thing is, I don't know whether or not this game is... I, okay, for the record, I don't think this game is able to achieve the target it's setting out in the tagline. I just don't think that's realistic. Uh, I don't want to accuse them of lying or false advertising. I just don't think that... Especially, you've got to bear in mind, the kind of porn-sick person who's likely to be clicking on those videos. Honestly, if, 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 if they are capable of achieving that within five seconds kind of well done to them because they must be very desensitized at that point you know like i would assume mentally like you would think it would take a lot to you know really get them going considering how much they must have consumed um so honestly like that's kind of impressive uh but i just don't see it happening very lonely people or kids yeah, I heard um, that there's like a new rule in Louisiana, which basically says that you need to get like a government mandated ID in order to watch porn, um, which, yeah, I feel like I feel like on some level, like you just got to say that seems like a, a good idea. Um, you know, I mean, I understand there's like skepticism about these ID things, but it's kind of just like there's no way around the fact that it's either have it be regulated in some kind of way where there needs to be a somebody reliably verifying your age or else kids are going to be able to access it. So I don't know. I just feel like whatever. Um, I have an important question, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. Are you an optimist or a pessimist when it comes to the potential success of gender critical feminism? Um... Well, I suppose if I had a pessimistic take, it would be that I worry that the the big problems will be sorted out, but it will then mean that people... It will basically take steam out of the movement, you know? Uh, like, basically, I worry that people won't challenge the fundamental idea of trans identity they will just talk about, like, you know, drag queen story hour and, like, hey, you know, maybe people shouldn't be showing their penis to kids. And then, like, people will change their mind on that. But then it will be, like, job done, and that will take, like, the wind out of the sails of the movement. I think that's the thing. Like, I don't really... I guess I'm, I'm not so pessimistic as to think, like, the um, extreme gender identity woo-woo will succeed. I don't think it could. So I'm not I'm not that pessimistic, but uh, yeah, I think there is a possible negative outcome where the worst of it will be dealt with, but it will still continue, and then eventually, because you don't like you know what's the word, like a weed, you don't you don't get the the root out, it just ends up coming back. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, I think I, I will say. I don't really like predicting the future, but I feel like the optimistic outcome of actually, you know, basically a uh, pretty much total victory for the gender critical movement, I don't think it's so unrealistic. I do need to really quickly get some water, uh, but I will be back. I'll be back. There's, there's like this movie called Terminator where this guy, Arnold, Arnold Schwartz and then word says that. Oh, also, I made a, a quesadilla, um, and like, because basically we have a, this is to, uh, this is uh, day, day one of the uh, the working out progress, actually wait, no, I, I can make it look worse, okay, there we go, that's like more relaxed, I can make it look, okay, no, <laughs> okay, no, yeah, so this is a, a quesadilla, my logic was, so, I was like, so there's still leftover turkey, you know, but the leftover turkey is, it's dry, and I thought to myself, well, like, if I just covered it in melted cheese, 
then I feel like it wouldn't feel dry. You know, like how can something be dry when it's covered in melted cheese? And I think I was right. Um, the only issue is I haven't really quite worked out browning bread because, okay, like that looks quite nice. Like it's, you know, there's some little brown spots. But on this side, that's like burnt. I don't know, like that's like nice and like kind of, you know, like that's like toasted. But that, that's just like, and like this bit's like, I don't know, whatever. So yeah, I haven't worked out how to brown bread. Um, boom. I know you're like, hold on a minute, why do I have a random thing? It's just because like, I'm a real grazer. So I make food. I think it must mean I have a really strong like, um, immune system against microbes because I've heard that like, microbes start growing on food when it's left out relatively quick. But for me, I just like, I just very frequently just let my food go cold and then eat it later. I almost left my water bottle. Hello. Quesadillas need to be cooked slowly. Eh. Yeah. I think, like, I don't know. I think I'm a very impatient person. Some might say that's a, an asset. Not me, though. No, there's also that weird, um... I'm just looking at my games. Because I'm a gamer. There's also that weird uh, end of my sentence, uh, like strategy game. Where's my, here it is. Timey kangaroo down, sport, timey kangaroo down. Take me koala back, Jack, take me koala back. He lives out on the track, Mac, or whatever he's called. So take me koala back all together now, tie me kangaroo down, sport, tie me kangaroo down. Play your didgeridoo, Stu, play your didgeridoo. Keep playing until I pull through, Stu, just play your didgeridoo. I don't know if you want to play San Andreas, Liberty City, or Vice City. Uh... Probably, probably Liberty City, just because I think Liberty City is, I just prefer Liberty City. I feel like they have um, funnier accents. Sorry, I'm just, I know I'm not showing my screen yet, it's because I'm just going to play in silence while you all watch me, that's not true. No, it's because I wanted to load it up, mostly because, um, not that I don't trust you, and also not that I haven't, uh, exposed my full name before, but I've got my full name written somewhere. So I'm just like, yeah, let's get rid of it. Okay. Boom. So, um, I thought we were watching Lily Alexandre. Yeah. One person ruined it for everybody else by suggesting playing, um, games. Um, someone says, uh, Rolf was a pedo. Yeah, true. But counterpoint, um uh it's quite the um it's quite the earworm, isn't it? Isn't it? What's the other song? I can't even think. Do you do it? what are the other songs do you do? Um I don't think there's that song that's like Ma Boomerang won't come back, but I don't think that's by him, is it? Ma Boomerang won't come back. Ma Boomerang won't come back. 
do 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 do. Video games strike again. Da ba da ma na ma na ma na ma na. Big mouth, ba ba ba. Big mouth strikes again. Now I know how John of Arc felt. Oh, I screwed that up because I'm an idiot. I wonder who the next celebrity will be who's revealed to be a uh, pedo. Ah, I don't know. Okay, what's this gonna show? Ooh, ooh, cheeky. Ooh. Um, I feel like there was a um. I feel like there was somebody. Hmm. Actually, it wasn't as bad as I thought. So the uh. The Gays Against Groomers uh, Facebook account, like, basically posted. Um, I've got a cheat to give myself weapons, but that's just because I can't be bothered to run around looking for weapons like some kind of loser. Oh, crap. Stole the wrong car. <laughs> oi, oi. Uh, no, yeah, they posted a picture of um, Tom Hanks. Ignore my terrible driving. It's just because I'm not used to driving on the uh, wrong side of the road. Um, yeah, Tom Hanks, like, basically at a, uh, a, like, child pageant thing, like a child beauty pageant, and he was like, oh, you're, you're such a sexy baby, um, when he was, like, like, touching, like, a little girl, and I was like, oh, that's, that's pretty, that's pretty sus, as the kids are saying, but it turned out, actually, that that was from a clip that was, like, making fun of child beauty pageants, um, so, you know, gays against groomers, don't slander Tom Hanks. But the thing is, having said that at the same time, I'm kind of like, I, you know, let's face facts. I guess Tom Hanks, he, he could be, which I guess is like really the main point, um, which is that a lot of the time it's kind of very, <sighs> it, it's the people who you don't want it to be. You're always disappointed. I don't know, at least for me. Like, I always feel like it's going to be someone... But maybe that's not true, actually. I say you're disappointed. I feel like a lot of time it is actually quite predictable. Like, it's often quite eccentric people. I would like to imagine that Tom Hanks is not. I mean, imagine... I don't know, like... Do you ever think about uh, who's that guy who was played by Tom Hanks? Uh, Mr. Rogers. Like, it's a good thing that he, you know, didn't do any of that. What game is this again? It's called um, Jurassic... What? I was about to say Jurassic World. It's called Grand Theft Auto. Um, it's this game that was made in the year 1997. I always get confused about video games because, like, because old for video games is so relatively recent that I'll occasionally think to myself, like, I'll catch myself thinking that, like, old video games are from, like, the 1940s, which is, like, so dumb. But genuinely, like, I remember one time I was playing this game and I was using a machine gun. And I, like, genuinely had a thought in my head for a second of, oh, did they even have machine guns when this game came out? Like, ha had they invented that yet? Uh, or is this game just, like, you know, like, is this game imagining, like, you know, if, like, the, the guys who came up with this game, like, hey, see, Sonny, what if the, uh, what if this here Gatling gun was portable? You know, like, because cause they didn't have any, just because in my head I was like, it's so old, like, there's no way... Like, or it feels so old. And then, like, you think about it for a second, you're like, wait a minute. Like, uh, you, the films that were coming out in, like, 1997 were basically just as good as films today. Or, you know, I say as good. Like, looks identical. Like, they didn't look old. Like, there was nothing... Like, it's kind of wild how non... Like, how not noticeably old. Is that my phrase? That, that feels like a weird way of saying it. But, like, yeah, like, films today... No, films from the 90s aren't noticeably old, is what I'm saying. Like, you can't really tell, apart from, I guess, like, start, but, like, in terms of, like, video quality and things like that, you're not like, ugh, this is ugly. Um, but then, like, video games, you're like, wow, this is, this is rough. Um, I say that, obviously, I realise it's all about, like, computers, because, of course... Um, uh, computers in the, well, computer effects in the olden days weren't so good. Um, uh, I've completely ignored all the comments. Um, Tom Hanks's Fred Rogers really bothered me. Is there a reason why? What about, um, what about, 
um, Bob Ross. I don't think he, I don't think he could, um, because I don't know. Like he seems, he seems too well adjusted. I feel like most most nonces they've got to be on some level kind of depressed. I would think. Like they've got to be kind of like they've got to be sad about something. I don't think that things are going well. Wait, hold on. What even is the mission here? Uh, <clears throat> you want a cut from a bank job? You go get the patrol car in Guernsey City. Okay, thank you. Uh, don't worry, everybody. I will censor any um, any misogynistic language that's used. Um, there's like one level where you gotta like pick up uh, some uh, young lady so that she can, uh, you know, go have sex with your boss. I mean, it's not like you know, it's not so bad. Like it's not. But I think, like, I don't know, I think there's some objectifying language in it. Like, the actual premise itself, I mean, obviously, picking up somebody to have casual sex isn't the worst thing in the world, but... Um, uh, I disagree with the film quality. Wait, what am I even doing right now? Oh, God, I feel like I'm so dead. Oh, wait. Oh, no, what's happening? What is this? Oh, my Lord. Okay, I feel like I feel like I'm not paying enough attention to the uh, the missions, and I'm going to like miss what I'm supposed to be doing. Even though I've played this game before, a patrol car's waiting for you in Northwest Hackenslash. Such a cool name. Um, just doing a Q and A right now. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, again, I kind of mentioned I could be doing the whole Destiny thing of like playing a game and listening to something, but I genuinely think I'm I'm not. Like, I don't think I can do that. Like, I actually think I'm... It, it, like, I can listen to things while playing games, but I feel like I wouldn't say anything. Like, I'd just be sat like... Doi, 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 doi. Like, so you'd just be... Like, at that point, I literally would be just stealing content, you know, because I wouldn't actually be uh, reacting. Oh, come here, you stupid cop car. I feel like I'm going to get in so much trouble with this cop car. Okay. Please don't arrest me. Please don't arrest me. Oh, thank you. Cop cars are very, oh, the cops are very kind of, um, are very patient here. Um, oh, Hanks didn't really do those long silent moments. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really like the theme tune to Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, because I don't know how to explain this to you. Um, beauty wood isn't an, isn't a word. Um, and also, oh, wait, oh, oh wait, no, no, go away. Dude, look, I, I want to pick up the, oh, crap, I'm so dead. Oh my lord, okay. Ah! Oh my lord, I'm so... Wait, what? Like, what do I do? Like, there's no way I'm getting out of this alive. There's no way. There's no way, dude. Oh my lord. Like, what is this? What? What is that? Please, everywhere. By the way, do you read the chat of the phone or do you got a dual screen? i tell you what I got. I got a um, making the um, uh, window that I'm playing on small. Yeah, it really irked me. Um... Neologisms are logis logisms. It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. It just, it, I don't know. It's just, I feel like it's just not the best, you know? Um, okay, this, this mission's easy. But yeah, basically, I can't believe I've already failed a mission. Like, I shouldn't have picked the hardest mission first. That was the hardest mission, I swear. Uh, what am I thinking? Oh god, I ran someone over. Um, what's the end of the sentence? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like if you're gonna have like a classic show, you need to have like a classic theme tune, like the um, uh, sunny day, wishing the clouds away. Is that how it goes? I'm on a where the air is sweet. Time to get to Sesame. Oh, good, I got that. Sesame Street. That's like a good. That's a good tune. Um, see, that was very easy. Look, it's not. Actually, no, I didn't fail my first mission, because the first mission was the kidnapping mission. Um, so yeah, that's not so bad. Uh, what is another? Oh, of course. Um, every day... Wait, wait, what the... Oh, uh, no, it was it was a toy car. It was an explosive toy car. Um, what's this? Uh, uh, every day when you're walking down the street, everybody that you meet has a particular point of view. Oh, that's the most boring mission. And I say, hey, what a wonderful time today when you can learn to work and play where Mr. Ratburn will be gay. 
and get along with each other. You gotta do ba ja ba ja. Yeah. You are on fire. I mean, I have died. Let's not forget that, which, I don't know. To be fair, I've... Oh, you know what? I just realized also, I... Oh, I lost my, my goddamn... Uh, what's it called? Um, uh, armor. So I don't have any armor. Like, this this game... I'm, I'm so gonna die. Like, there's no way. Can I drive through that? Nope. Sometimes I don't know whether or not it's a door or a, um... Having fun isn't hard when you got a library card. Yeah. Um, what else is there? Are there any, like, good... Well, I guess. I mean... Oh, here's the thing. I think I'm right in saying, like... I, I don't know, like, I feel like, um... Uh, the American version of Pingu is, like, a way different theme tune. Because I saw it, like, I was, like... I think I was looking for the Pingu theme tune because... You know, that's, that's what I listen to uh, every single day when I'm doing my mindfulness meditation. <laughs> um, but uh, basically, it was like, the only way I can explain it is it was like, like that was kind of the, the tune. And I was like, what the hell is that? Because the actual uh, Pingu theme tune is, mop, 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 mop. That's the actual Pingu theme tune, and I was really disturbed to hear this like strange, um, this strange version. It was all like, um, oh yeah, so okay, Pingu, Pingu, yeah, that really disturbed me. Um, but also, uh, there was this show which I didn't watch because um, I didn't really engage with Japan at the time because I was very uh, opposed to, you know, their kind of society-wide uh, denial of their war crimes in World War Two. But um, there was this show called Sonic X, and um, I used to kind of... I, I was aware of it, but the one thing I liked about it was that they had this um, this theme tune that was like do 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 Sonic X Sonic X like that. and it was like it was like really intense and it was so cool and I was like one time I was just like oh man I didn't really like that show because you know Japan's war crimes and all that but um, let me uh, look it up anyway uh, just so I can remember that awesome theme tune so I look it up and it's like Sonic X theme tune and then it's like this like I was going to use, <laughs> um, I was going to be homophobic for a second to use a um, a word to describe two men who love each other as, as a negative thing. Uh, but what I meant to say was there was this uh, lame, let's say, um, song that was like, um, it was like, gotta go fast, gotta go fast. And I was like, what the hell is this? It just, it, it didn't have that oomph. And then, and I was like looking, and I saw all of these uh, presumably Americans because I assumed it was like the uh, the American version of the theme tune, and they were all like, "Man, I I, lo I love this theme tune. Like, oh, this is so great. I'm glad I found this theme tune." Blah blah blah. And I was like, "I'm sorry. Like, you don't have any business looking for this theme tune. This theme tune is not the uh, is not the Sonic X." <laughs> I was. <laughs> you need to. Yeah, you guys need to. Check out the old, uh, oh god, I'm so going to drive off this bridge. Um, the old uh, Sonic X theme tune. Um, I never really watched Pokemon, you know, when I was a kid. Uh, like, you know, I just never, I like, I, I was kind of joking about the whole Japan thing, but also at the same time, I also very literally did never watch anything to do with, like, Japan. Um, or, like, any, like, Japanese stuff. I was, yeah, I don't know, I just, I just avoided it, like the plague, um, I really need to find some armor, but I, I don't know, I'm just, oh wait, I have some, okay, never mind, ha, that was an accident, um, oh wait, oh yeah, okay, so I remember, the only thing I remember about Digimon is that he went, um, <clears throat> that is the theme tune again, which, as far as I remember, it was like, Digimon, Digimon Monsters, Digimon, something like that, 
Oh, a car speed up. That seems like a pointless thing. They have like these car speed up things in this game, which I just think to myself, I really struggle to control the car enough as it is. Where the hell am I? I literally don't know where I am. Uh, Like, where am I going? Where you come from? Where you going? Um, also, like, isn't there, I don't know. So there's Digimon. There's Pokemon. Oh, okay, and then there's like Yu-Gi-Oh. I don't know, like, I feel like the thing that always bothered me about Yu-Gi-Oh is it's like, like to me, it's sort of like the card game is the thing you introduce to turn the media franchise into a game, surely. But the media franchise literally just is a card game. It's kind of like, I think the best analogy I could make is it would be like, if instead of the Harry Potter films being, you know, like, films in their own right... Wait, am I supposed to be killing some people? Oh, okay. Um, like, they... No, wait, there's... there's oh, dear. Ah! Ah! Ah, God! Okay. That was scary. Wait, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, cool. I've got a lot of cops on me. Um, what's guaning? Oh, uh, yeah, okay, so basically... Uh, like, if instead, like, you just had, like, the games, which we know... Oh, sorry, the films... Yeah, as it is, the films are just, like, good films, and then anything kind of, um, uh, like, the, then, the, then the games came out, and they were, like, PlayStation games, where you use, like, you know, your, your PlayStation controller to, uh, other consoles are available, to, um, you know, take, uh, I, I'm gonna turn this into a sentence any second now, I swear, you use your PlayStation controller to basically play the game, to, you know, play out the experience of being Harry Potter. And the point I'm building up to eventually, slowly but surely, is that it would be like if, instead, the Harry Potter films themselves were about somebody navigating the world of Hogwarts using a PlayStation controller. That's what Yu-Gi-Oh is like. Because it's like they're taking the medium by which it's turned into a game, and acting as if that is the substance of of the media itself. Or like, you know, in other words, the film is about... Uh, oh, there's the thingy. Is about turning things... Is about a card game. I don't get it. Opin opinion on um, Andrew Tate. He got arrested, lol, he is in jail. He loves snitching on himself. You know what I say? Um, a ra rap snitches... Telling all their business, sitting up in court like they're their own star witness or whatever MF Doom said. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I've seen, like, a lot of right-wing people make fun of him, which is, like, a weird situation because I kind of want to be like, ha, 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 you know, take that. You're getting made fun of by right-wing people. But also, wait, I think... Oh, God, do I have to... I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but obviously, at the same time, you know, I'm not a big fan of right-wingers. But, um, like, a lot of people making fun of him... Hey, I, I don't know, I sort of think about, like, how, like, his whole, like, ideology, if you can even call it that, is just, like, own cars and sleep with women. And I do think that is quite a, um, a funny, like, insult to direct to him. So, yeah. Uh, I gotta run. Thanks for the stream. Love the pro gaming outro. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, I don't know, I mean... It is funny that, like, he, um, he became a Muslim and then immediately, you know, tried to, like, get, get him some sex slaves. It's like, dude, you're supposed to fight for the caliphate first. Oh, wait, I'm just supposed to go in here. Um. Uh. Remember when, everyone was, <laughs> remember when everyone was saying that Zayn Malik joined ISIS? <laughs> that was so random. Oh, Zayn. Bless you. You little, uh... You little madman. Little Zayn. What's he even been? I don't know. I was gonna, I was gonna make fun of him. I don't know, like, how do we, how do we rank, um, One Direction members? I would say surely, um... I feel like Louis Tomlinson is, like, the worst, because he's not very good-looking. And also, he hasn't really had very much meaningful success as a singer. Um, 
So yeah, I think he he ranks pretty low. And then probably after that would be uh, Niall Horan, because I don't think he's had much independent success as a singer, but he's slightly better looking. Um, after that would probably be Zane, because he's had some success as a singer, and also he's probably m more good looking. You know, he's 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 pretty good looking. Uh, what is this for? Okay. Okay, boom. Um, and then obviously Liam Payne, uh, he he did okay. Uh, he he had some music, but you know, like at the end of the day, he's still not really successful. And then obviously you have a uh, Hazza, the Has the Hasmeister, who um, was actually a big success. Oh God, I have no idea where I am. Yeah. Harry Styles top tier, but you bolded a bit. That's really funny. Did he, or has he just got a bad hairline? Because I, you know, as somebody with a high hairline myself, I can't be making fun of people. Uh, on due, like you know, I, it does occur to me because I was thinking to myself, like, oh, you know, I, I'm definitely past the point of um, of a hairline being a worry for me. But then I realized that. Oh God, where am I? Okay, boom. Oh wait, no wait, I think I've screwed this up. Yeah, I have. Um, then I realized that Uncle Adams um, noticeably lost hair um, in his, like, after his 30s. So now I'm kind of like, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not sure now. Like, maybe I still stand to lose some hair, which is a, um, a horrifying thought. Because I was kind of like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm past my mid-20s, so surely I'm, I'm safe now. But no, it's not so simple. Ah. Yeah, I mean, honestly, though, at the same time, like, I don't know, it's kind of a weird situation, because I'm like, my dad's bald, and no one really thinks anything of it. So my instinct has always been to be like, well, now, with my hair, like, having hair as I do, if people saw me, um, you know, being bald, they would be like, Oh, they have people imagine me being bald, they'd be like, oh, that looks weird. But I feel like, actually, if I did go bald, people would get used to it. It's a hard thing to imagine, but it is how it is. Um, okay, so what am I doing here? Uh, there's, like, some... I think I've got a... So basically, a really good, oh crap, I don't want to get arrested, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are we all good to uh, head off now? Let's see. Oh, we still got that person to worry about. Boom, 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 boom. Crap, I killed myself. I'm literally on, no. I wonder if I'm, if that's mission failed. Oh, it's not, good. So I just have to go pick up the car. Being bold would be such a relief, one less thing to worry about. It would make me look more like Andrew Tate, which is the ultimate goal, of course. Um, yeah, like, I, yeah, I don't really care about going bold. Um, having said that, when I said that to my fiance, she's she's uh, expressed, um, you know, like negative feelings towards the idea. Uh, so you know that's 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 what that is right there basically you know but again i maintain it's just because you know she knows me now with my luscious locks but if she got used to me without them she'd be like oh i love your bold your bold head i don't know it would be i don't know having said that it would be kind of cool to see my dad with um with hair again just because like i'm used to him being bold all right we should end um we should end off this mission. Let's be realistic. Let's not be mavericks. I literally have no idea where I am. I, I'm actually such an old lady driver. Everyone's always like, oh, you know, it was good back in the day before they added minimaps to everything. No, I need my minimaps. If someone modded this so you could have minimaps, I would legit be inclined to learn how minimaps work. I'm literally just doubling back on myself because I have no idea where I am. 
and I just got seriously damaged by that car. I realize I could be playing this with sound. Am I really that stupid? Like, I'm just being completely... Dun, 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 dun. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, is that loud enough for you? Okay. Um, you should play the classic Fallout games, they're really fun. Um, yeah, I, I'm not I'm not so adverse to that as a possibility. I'm literally just having to drive away from where I am just because I know that when I tried to drive in the direction of where I was, it ended up with a dead end. How fast are we driving? 50 miles an hour? That's slow. That's slow. Because you only play old ass games. What's an ass game? Um... No, yeah, I, I would actually like to do that. Like, I think, like, um, I feel like I've turned off again too quick. Wait, oh, let's try it out. Wait, where the hell am I? I'm so, oh god, I'm so done with this. No, I gotta go. I gotta like, okay, do. Boom! Surely, surely. What? Where? The, okay. Surely this is gonna take us somewhere. Yeah, boom! We found a main road. Um. And your computer ain't even that bad, TBH. Lol. You just don't know. I, to be fair, I've never like with my new computer. I've not reached a point of um of breaking it. Like I've not reached a point of like overburdening it with anything. So it could be kind of fine. Oh, you twitch too nice. Yeah, just for the record, don't get too excited about my twitching because. Um, all it is is just these videos, but sim simulcast to uh, Twitch. Okay. Oh, by the way, this is the mission I was talking about where you got to pick up the woman so she can go for a. Um, I believe it's called a D appointment by a strong and powered woman. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, we're only 10% damage, that's not so bad. Vroom! Vroom! Oh! Vroom! Oh. It's pretty much impossible to drive in this game without crashing into people 24-7. It's pretty silly. Like, yeah, like I don't even... I can't even imagine playing... Well, I suppose I could, like, you know, I guess if people, like, couldn't... Super, super run, like... Super run, speed run, like Super Mario, and get everything, like, so they're doing it completely perfect. I suppose there's no reason why somebody couldn't learn to play this game such that they don't just constantly bump into things while also doing it fast, but... Oh no. Have I, have I like, screwed this up? They're trying to go in an angle. Oh no, there we go. Boom! Mission complete. Uh, Twitch handle, I think it's just called... Where's my... Uh, my Twitch handle is The King Critical. Um, K and C are capitalized, but I don't know if that means anything to you. Oh right, yeah, I don't know if that matters. Um, so there, there we go, we should probably end this now. It must be a hard game to speedrun though, yeah it is. Wait, why am I being directed towards? There's actually a tank in this game, that's fun. Go away. Remember that time when I said I would stop now? It's basically, it's basically my life. This is... It's the source of all my own productivity. I'm like, yeah, I'll stop now. I won't. I'm kind of just assuming that I'll die. What's the job? The cops are on your tail. There's a car you can use at the Central Bricks Hospital. Sure is. Where? Wait, where's Bricks? Oh, here we go. Animal Crossing voices. <laughs> oh, I didn't really mean to do that, but it's fine. Excuse me, excuse me. God. Do this the old-fashioned way. Oh. 
Take the car to Nell's Respace Shop in Central... Where? Where is it? Central... Central Brooklyn. No, Brooklyn. Sorry, I almost pronounced it correctly. Uh, is this Brooklyn? Wait, oh, this is Island View. Island Heights. I think Brooklyn's... Well, I know it's not here. I really need to, um... Yay, I got my face on your show. Oh, hello. Oh, this is Avic Fett's stream. Hey, Avic Fett. I hope you, you do good streams. I uh, I met some. I don't know if I told you. I met some guy at a wedding who uh, who streamed, and he was like making his money off of it. And on the one hand, I was like impressed, but then I saw he only had like a thousand followers, and I was like, okay, like I can see that maybe Twitch is a more viable way of making money than YouTube. But I kind of feel like basically it was a situation of um, he was kind of saying he, he was like saying something that sounded impressive. You know, like, oh, I, I make my money from, you know, streaming. But actually what he was really saying was more, I'm not making enough money to survive, you know? Which, just personally, I didn't know how to feel about that, because that's something I could say as well. You know, like, because I, um, I make money off of what I do, but just not enough money to really amount to a wage. But I suppose what I could do is just start saying to people, uh, yeah, like, um, uh, yeah, like, streaming is my job and you know just trust that nobody would be able to actually confidently look into the details about how much money I was actually likely to be making. Twitch is dying lol YouTube is winning the race. That's interesting. Where am I going? Like what am I doing? Oh. Bring the car to the warehouse in Brooklyn and be careful I got a job for you. Why? I don't know, you kind of do just realize like a lot of this game is just drive here, then drive here, then drive here. But I suppose, I don't know, that's life I guess. You know. I guess like the thing is, most video games pretty much, at least in my experience, are like in a situation where they're quite addictive. Where it's just like you can just play them and 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 play them. And play them, and play them. Uh, right up until eventually you just get incredibly bored of them realize actually there's not that much substance to them. Uh, okay, what's happening here? So I gotta go get a patrol car. Look, yeah, it's like you gotta drive there, you gotta drive there. Wait, so I'm gonna have a phone number for people to call. I'm gonna do fake celebrity interviews. I'm really excited about it. You know what, dude? The fact that you're really excited about it is very wholesome. Um, I don't know if I can, if, if it's appropriate for me to uh, be a dampener on your um, negativity. Oh, sorry, no, a dampener on your uh, your excitedness. The thing is, like, I don't know. In my experience, I, I like the fact you're excited about something. But part of the reason I like it is because, um, it, or rather, it's it's kind of like it's a bittersweet thing because I've been excited about different things before, and then they've uh, they've not actually amounted to that much. Which is kind of like, I mean, that's kind of the, the sucky thing about any kind of content creation. Um, like, no matter what, like, whether you want to, like, make money off of it or not, or whatever, like, however serious you want to take it, at the end of the day, you're probably doing stuff because you want people to engage with it and, like, take it seriously. And then, and therefore, it does kind of suck when you are, like, really excited about something, and then, you know, eventually you're hit with the reality of, yeah. Which actually, so when I've, whenever I've done like big projects, I always find myself uh, towards the end of the experience, or you know, like completing the project, just feeling so like, like lacking motivation and absolutely convinced it's going to be a complete failure. Like I'll be like, I'll be working on it, like, yeah, 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 this is great, this is a you know, great response video, or film review or some other little random project I'm doing and then literally when I'm on like you know the last bit of editing I'm suddenly just like suddenly just get like preemptively depressed and I'm just like oh god what am I doing it's a failure this is no one's gonna like this 
everyone's going to think it's boring and stupid and no one's going to watch it and blah blah blah. Which is why I do think a genuinely good strategy is, oh am I going to get to pick up the tank? Oh yeah, okay, so I get to show you the tank. A genuinely good strategy is not to care... Oh god, wait, what? How's this? Oh my lord! I do not like this. Um... Uh... Oh crap. So I've got to stick with the car. God, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Oh god, I'm so dead. Okay. Boom. Okay, cool. Um, oh, that makes sense. Military guys got in the tank. I just wanted the tank. Boom. Oh god. Get out of there. Okay, so like, where am I going then? Okay, cool. At least I'm here. Oh god. Well, alright, let's call that an end. Yeah. <laughs> Alright everybody, that was good. I swear I, I died on purpose because I knew this stream needed to come to an end, that was my reason. 25 people still watching. I suppose if anybody's here and they didn't engage in liking the video earlier, I will say, um, uh, three, two, one, like spike! Boom. I must admit the one thing I find funny about like the whole let's play thing is that I must admit that I usually um, listen to videos rather than watch them. So I guess for the people who just watch videos, this was basically just me me talking about whatever. Anyway. Alright. Bye everyone. Good to see you. I'll catch you on the flip side.